10 Shocking Facts About Squid Game That You Totally Missed Number 10 The creator of Squid Game began working on the script over a decade ago. H. Wang started writing his script in 2008 and completed the first draft in 2009. The first two episodes alone took the writer and director over six months to write. He told Radio Times that the story felt unfamiliar and harsh at the time, and he was concerned that it would be too abstract to be commercialized and reach a larger audience, until Netflix took it up almost a decade later. The creator claimed he struggled with money and casting. However, the world has changed into a place where such strange, brutal survival stories are genuinely embraced. Number 9 The show was originally called Something Else. The series was previously titled Round 6 when Netflix announced it in September 2019. Creator H. Wang Dong first Hayek's partnership with a foreign entertainment company was with Netflix. Number 8 Squid Game was originally meant to be a movie. The idea was originally conceived as a full picture, according to the inventor in an interview with Variety, given H. Wang's history in film. This isn't surprising. Silenced and The Fortress, for example, were both written and directed by him. He was also the screenwriter and director of Miss Granny, a musical comedy that is largely regarded as one of Korea's most successful films of all time. In a still-watching Netflix YouTube video, H. Wang also stated that the original film did not feature the police detective Jun Ho, Jai Yong. The woman who gave her life for S.A.E. Bilk was initially intended to be a male character. Jai Gender Yong's was changed by H. Wang because a link between women would make more sense. Number 7 The First Games Doll is a real creation you can visit. The scary gigantic doll from the show's first episode is real and can be located in Jinshan County, some three hours north of Seoul. The doll was allegedly borrowed and then returned for the filming of Squid Game, according to Cory Boo. The doll guards the entrance to a museum dedicated to horse carriages. Number 6 VIPs resemble Donald Trump. Though many audience members dislike the VIPs, their characterization and writing, while occasionally over the top and clumsy in conversation, were very faithful to how the filmmaker sought to represent them. It's easy to see why the VIPs are largely white, all men, and mostly American, despite their masks, because the United States possesses one of, if not the largest, worldwide economies. The inclusion of more than one American appears to be a choice rather than an accident. The filmmaker even said that one of the VIPs looked like Donald Trump and that he wanted them to portray the powerful elite, the global CEOs at one point. The crassness and low-hanging fruit of their jokes was also a narrative decision, demonstrating that their wealth did not imply that they were better or even classier people. One of them making sexual overtures to detective character H. Wang Jun Ho could be an allusion to Western sex bats in Asian countries such as South Korea. The painted figures in the room they were in also included painted men and women who were utilized as furniture, demonstrating how they objectify human beings, as the director points out. Number 5 The Red and Blue Envelopes Squid Game has spawned a slew of ideas, one of the most prominent of which is around the red and blue envelopes handed by the recruiter at the start of the series. It's become so popular that the director has spoken out against it, clarifying that it's not real. The hypothesis proposed that the red and blue envelopes delivered during the recruiter's Didachi game would determine whether the character would become a guard or a player in the games. This was predicated on the premise that the guards were caught in the same situation as the players, obliged to obey orders under threat of death. However, filmmaker H. Wang Don Hayek has subsequently stated that the colors were inspired by an old folk legend in which a ghost in a restroom would force a person to pick between red and blue tissues. Unfortunately, whether you choose red or blue, the ghost will kill you in either case. Much like the people who are willing to return to the Squid Game find no difference between the killer games and their everyday lives. Number 4 H. Wang originally wanted the masked guards to look like Boy Scouts. In the still-watching Netflix video, H. Wang also claimed that he wanted the masked guards to wear a Boy Scout-like uniform at first, but that it displayed the men's body too clearly. He added that he envisioned the guards as ants in a colony. The masks were influenced by traditional Korean masks such as hahodol and fencing masks. According to Key, we added a line to it during the process, which made it look like an ant's face, which was the final design, she explained. The CEO's dazzling animal masks are also crucial. The masks also enabled them portray themselves as extremely powerful beasts to represent the power elite, the global CEOs. Number 3 The Frontman The Frontman is a fascinating character from the start, but his revelation as H. Wang Jun Brother Ho's in Ho makes him even more fascinating when you consider the series' tiny subtleties. We learn that the Frontman won Squid Game a few years ago. He did not spend it on luxury but oppositely was living in a Gashiwan, 
which is a small, typically temporary room rented by impoverished employees or students, indicating that he was not interested in spending his winnings. Similar to how Gihan spent a year in poverty due to the trauma of his experience, he was also a cop, and the filmmaker has claimed that he wants to explore the frontman's narrative because of the problem of cops not only in South Korea, but globally, implying the frontman's function as a cop. When Gihan was offered VIP treatment at his bank, it implies that Inho took the offer. In contrast with Gihan's decision to actively oppose the entire system, Inho's ideology of true equality in the games also clearly reflects his boss Il Nam's view of what the truly rich and the truly poor have in common. Ironically, both ideologies are proven false by Gihan, the show's protagonist. Number 2 Ali's Immigrant Woes Ali, another of the series' direct parallels to real-life social evils, exemplifies the vulnerability of immigrants. Ali appears to be undocumented, which exacerbates his precarious status, but even as a legal worker under the EPS, Ali would be limited to only one employer. He can't even change jobs because his employer in the show is purposefully withholding money from him. Ali would have become illegal even if he had arrived as a legal worker because he had left an abusive employment. Many immigrant workers in South Korea are subjected to appalling working circumstances, such as sleeping on factory floors at risk of freezing to death and, like Ali, losing fingers or developing other impairments without getting compensation for job injuries. Ali's confrontation with his supervisor and parody of hand my Nayo show that he doesn't have a submissive personality at all, despite his extremely respectful words and how he addresses the Koreans he speaks to. Even social circumstances can be a minefield for him, as evidenced by the way he addresses others as sir until he is given permission to address Sang Woo as big brother. Number 1 Gi Hun's Red Hair Though many people were perplexed and surprised by Hun's new hairstyle, which was a vibrant, almost cartoonish red, there was more than one narrative rationale for it. Red depicts his fury and how his newfound riches, power, and drive would motivate him to rebel against the Squid Game's leadership. It's a dramatic contrast to his paralyzing anguish, which sprang from a year in which he was penniless while having enormous wealth. He Hun's red hair and all, is ready to fight now that a fire has been sparked beneath him. He Hun's new hair, according to the director, was partly inspired by his desire to make a dramatic transformation and demonstrate that he could never return to his previous personality. According to the director, it was something Gi Hun would never have have done previously, demonstrating how much he changed as a result of the games and his numerous losses. There was no way the Gi Hun from the beginning of the series would have lasted to the conclusion after losing his best friend, the people he'd learned to trust in the game, and his own mother. Bonus Fact The Real Life Dragon Motors Strike The 2009 S. Sangyong Motor Crisis is a real-life occurrence that is heavily mentioned in Squid Game. After major layoffs during the 2008 financial crisis, workers at the massive automotive company went on strike and occupied the firm. It's no surprise that Gi Hun's past includes taking part in a violently suppressed worker uprising at a car business. The fact that the fictional automotive firm in Squid Game was called Dragon Motors and the real-life S. Sangyong factory is roughly translated to Double Dragons is the most obvious indication. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this.